Hey guys, Jay here, SmartHelping.com. Uh, we're going to talk about how to build a sensitivity table for data table for any real estate model. So the one I'm going to look at, so we'll go to real estate models. I'm going to look at this first one. This is one of my most used uh, acquisition sheets, or it's actually for acquisitions or uh, new developments. It's very robust. Uh, we'll look at how to sensitize uh, variables and it's a little tricky, <clears throat> so that's why I'm making a tutorial video, but once you know how to do it, you can really um, really get some cool stuff with these models. So we'll go to this one here. And the, the first thing is that all your input variables have to be on the tab you're doing the analysis on. Now in this case, for this real estate model, I wanna analyze the purchase price and the exit cap rate. Now the exit cap rate is here, but the purchase price I have entered here. So what I have to do is put the purchase price as a hard-coded input here in order for this to work right. So this is now purchase price and then reference that here. So now this is a, a reference and not an input. And that's all, that's a really the main modification. Now it's really easy to do. So we'll just say, okay, we wanna see at you know five different purchase prices, what is our IRR? And so we've got that, then we've got cap rates coming down here. Two, three, four, five. And then what we want is the project IRR. We could also run this for the LP or GP for the different cash flow waterfalls uh, just as easily. But we're going to reference the executive summary project IRR. And now we can see, okay, <clears throat> what's going to happen at these different purchase prices to the internal rate of return and these different exit cap rates. So what are we buying the building for or property or what's it, uh, or what are we, uh, and what are we selling for? Now this could also be, uh, if these are all your development and construction costs, I mean, it's hard because you've got to isolate it into one cell. So you'd have to like do a, some analysis to see what your total construction costs are, have an input for that here, and then have that referenced here just as one cell. Um, Cause there are limitations to the data tables, but <clears throat> we will see here. now. Some ways you might get around it are saying, okay, here's my base construction costs over time. And then you can make a reference to the model to say, okay, I, I want the actual cost to be um, 3% higher or 5%. And you can have that 5% be the thing that is on your data table and changes. And then that would change your all the costs here up or down by that percentage. And that would also work. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's a little tricky to do these. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two. All right, so we just click on this cell. We highlight the table. We go to data. And the reason why this is nice is you don't have to change all these variables on the model to see the output. You can just see it side by side and it will run the model through all these scenarios. That's the nice thing about these data tables when you have complex models. So our row input is actually gonna be the row here. Uh, going across the top, so the purchase price. So we want to isolate that. And then our column, columns going across are the exit cap rate. We hit OK. And now look at, here's our different project level IRRs. Very cool. At those different values. So what that means is we're saying, you know, let me make this a little lighter. As you as the purchase price goes up, your IRR goes down. So 28% is good, 1.7% is not good. Uh, and it holds all the other variables uh, in the model as they are. So if you do change those, like let's say we make the exit, uh, you know, in only a couple years like this. Okay, now everything updates based on that being true. As the cap rates go up, that means the, per, the selling price is going down, so the IRRs are going down as you go down and down as you go across. Now, usually you can highlight these and make uh, uh, color scales to make it look cool. You know, like, uh, where's the green? Like that. So the highest numbers are greener, then it gets lighter. 
Now we could also isolate other variables. So we could say, okay, I want to see what the IRR of the LP is going to be. So I just reference that here. And now look, I can see, well, what if we, so what this means is, <clears throat> so this is 15.9. That's at a million and 6%. So a million, 6%, there's our 15.9. Now we could say, what if this was 2.5 million purchase price? Well, then in theory, the IR should be negative 6 point or negative 22 if the X is cap 6. So if I change this to 2.5 million, you see there, 22.5. So that's what number we're getting. So this table gives you all these scenarios without having to change anything. We could also do it for the LP on this one. Adjust it. <clears throat> we could do it for the GP. This is the current scenario is 1 million with the 6% cap. So this one right here. 35. So pretty cool. Uh, these, these tables can be very useful. Now they do, if your model is pretty complex, it can weigh down the model. Uh, so adding multiple ones of these you know, three or four, it can be heavy. It depends on how much logic is required. But yes, it's a very useful, the, the main thing that you have to know is that your two variables you're isolating in the table have to be on the same tab as the input for whatever you're um, sensitizing. And once you know that, and then the columns and rows, it's really easy. You just, you know, you can make these as long as you want or as short as you want. Just highlight it, and there you go. Now, these div errors just mean that there's no uh, feasible value as those numbers change. We'll go back to uh, LP. So here, if I'm an LP, I can see, well, we probably don't want to buy it for more than a million. And depending on how much we can sell it for in the future, you know, that could be, you know, my returns are, are looking pretty good at between a four and a six. When you're picking your output result, like this is IRR, you generally want something that is important. Now we could also do, we could also do the equity multiple. And that is, you know, different than IRR. A little bit easier to understand because it's just your investment times this multiples how much you're getting back. So that could be more telling than an IRR to see how much ca like your cash on cash return. I also have cash on cash return up here though, which we can we can isolate. So I'm making a negative. I'm not making any money greater than you know what, around 1.5 million in a six percent or higher cap i'm now losing money but yeah that's it that's all i got for you if you want to check out more templates i've got hundreds of them here at smarthelping.com you could browse by category i've got a lot of bulk discounts too if you buy um, by category here's all the bundles i've got and you could also buy everything I've ever built, download all templates for $9.99, pretty good value. You're getting over, now it's up to like 160 or 170, I think, uh, total templates. And there's just lots and lots to learn here uh, in regards to finance, financial modeling, thinking through the economics of all kinds of different businesses. I build models for a lot of general industries, you know, industrial sector, automotive, manufacturing, hospitality services retail trade financial services recreation all sorts of models i do a lot of SaaS modeling recurring revenue cohort modeling uh, real estate obviously general valuation models so check it out and uh, like subscribe i'll see you guys on the next one